Let's say you have an image that has fairly straight borders. Today we'll go really quickly to show you how you could create some sort of an animation like this that could be fairly useful in situations like my previous video where I had to create something like this while I spoke about the introduction. So with that, let's actually figure out how we can do this. In our default scene, we'll go ahead and tap X to delete our default cube. Then we'll press Shift A and search for an images as planes, which is an add-on that you have to enable by going to your edit preferences, add-ons, and then searching for images as planes. So if you have this checked, you can always press shift a image images as planes. So let's say you have your image, make sure that you keep your material type as principled itself or emit based on what you're going for. But since I want there to be nice reflections and shines, I'm going to actually keep it at principle. Similarly for the blend mode, you could keep it at blend or clipped based on if you have transparency, but the entire aim is to show you what to do if you do not have transparency. So we're going to keep it like this itself. We'll choose show back face because we're going to be rotating it and we want to see the other side as well. And similarly, the shadow mode can be clipped none. It doesn't make too much of a difference based on your preferences. Once you're happy with all that, click import images as planes. Now you can go to your rendered view by pressing this button and you should be able to see your image present on the plane. Now, since we don't want any of these outline borders to be seen, we're going to press one to go into your front view. And if it's not oriented correctly, press three to go into your side view and then press tab to go into edit mode. Then press control or to add in loop cuts. Make sure that you bring your cursor to either this edge or this edge so that you get the vertical or horizontal line. And once the line appears, type in the number 1000 to create 1000 cuts. Now do the same thing for the other axis as well and then tap enter twice to confirm the cuts. Now you can go ahead and press this button to go into your face select mode and just select the necessary faces that are present with your object. So the best way to select this is by pressing C for circle select and now you can make your circle equal to the radius of the edge of this logo and just click and all of those get selected. Similarly, you can do that for all the other corners as well. And once you're happy with that, you can press B for box select and just select all of these edges as well. So that way you'll get a selection of your logo and make sure you press B before you select so that the previous selection also remains while you make your selection. So once you're happy with the selection of your logo or whatever image you have, press control I to invert your selection. And after you press control I, and invert the selection, press delete faces, or you can tap X faces. So that way you're left with just your logo. So then back in object mode, you can go to your modifiers and just add in a solidify modifier to give it some amount of thickness. So as you can see, there's already a little bit of thickness, but you can just increase that thickness by using this slider over here. And if you see these types of shading issues where it looks like the image is going behind, that's because in the material settings, we chose to keep the blend mode at alpha blend, but we're also showing back face. Either you can switch off show back face, but that way there might be a situation where the back is not seen. So instead of alpha blend, you can actually keep this at opaque itself. Now I'll keep the thickness very low and to get all of these jagged edges to become much smoother, I'm actually going to use a smooth node. By using the smooth node and increasing the factor to one and switching off the Z axis smoothing because that's the local Z axis, we'll get smoothing only on these rims. So you can just increase the factor until you're happy with it. You can also go ahead and add in a smooth corrective modifier. And over there for the smooth type, I'm going to change it from simple to length weight and also increase the factor all the way to one and check only smooth. That way you can just increase the repeat and play around with the scale and you can see how the edge becomes nice and smooth just like this. So once you're happy with that. Under the materials, you can increase the metallic all the way to one if you want. I'm also going to reduce the roughness down to 0.2 and then I'll just press R twice to get trackball rotation and rotate it to some sort of an angle like this. Now I'll press GZ to move it up and then I'll press shift A and search for a mesh cylinder. Now before I do anything, I'll go to this drop down over here and increase the number of vertices to make it nice and smooth. I'll go with maybe 256 vertices and then I'll press SZ to scale it down on the Z axis till we just have a small little platform or base. Then I can go to object shades auto smooth so that these edges become completely not noticeable. Then to add in a floor, I'll press shift A and search for a mesh plane and I'll scale it up indefinitely. Now for this particular object, I'll press shift A and search for an empty plane axis, GZ to move it up. And I'll just parent this object to the empty by pressing control P set parent to object. Then with the empty selected, I'll go to the object properties here and then I'll add in a driver or keyframes on the Z rotation to allow the icon to smoothly rotate through the animation. So before I get to the animation, I'll set the animation default by going to my output properties, changing the frame rate to 30 frames per second. End frame, I'm going to keep it at 150 so that it's a five second long loop. And then in my object properties, I can press the back arrow to go to frame zero and tap I while hovering over the rotation of the Z. Now I don't need X and Y rotations, so you can just press those to remove them, or you can always right click and choose insert single keyframe. So that way the other options will not be selected and you get only one keyframe for the Z axis. Then on frame 150, I'll rotate by 360 degrees, which 
which is one full rotation. And then I'll right click and choose insert single keyframe so that we get the keyframe for the Z axis. And down here, I'll press T linear so that it's a smooth loop and we get this rotation. But right now it doesn't look too great because we don't have nice lighting. So to make much better lighting, we'll use a few area lamps by pressing shift A and searching for light area. And then I'll just press GZ to move it up. I'll scale it down on maybe the Y axis, GZ, GY, and maybe just scale it up a bit. And then shift D, Y, R, Z, and just place these out however you feel fit. Before we actually get to the texturing, make sure you go to your render properties and switch on bloom and screen space reflections. But the bloom, I'm going to reduce the intensity to 0.02 and I'm going to clamp it down at five as well. Then I'll go to my world properties, change the background color all the way to black. After which I'll just place my camera here by just pressing control alt zero to snap my camera to view. Then I'll select the camera and press G to just move it around till I get a position that I'm happy with. But to make sure that I'm happy with the position, I'll go to my object data properties, expand viewport display and increase passport out all the way to one. Then I'll go to my composition guides and just switch on center so that I can just centralize this entire thing. And to make the camera move, I can either tap G and move it around or I can tap N to bring up this side panel, go to view and choose camera to view. That way I can move around as I would generally move around my 3D viewport and just rotate it till I'm happy with the absolute positioning of my camera. So I think some sort of an angle like this seems fine while keeping the logo completely centralized. I have nice reflections and the background as well. So what I have to do next is actually give materials to both the floor as well as this podium. So first for the floor, I'm just going to make it completely metallic. So I'll add in a new material, make it completely metallic, and I'll also reduce the roughness down to 0 0.2. And then for this base podium, I want it to be metallic, but I also want there to be some lights. So I'll bring my cursor down here, make this a bit smaller, click and drag to create a new window from the junction of those two windows, and then change this from the 3D viewport to the shader editor. Then I'll press this plus button to add in a new material. I'll make it completely metallic and the roughness as well, I'll reduce to 0.2. Now I'll press shift A and search for a wave texture. And if you have node wrangler enabled, you can press control T to add in the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Then I'll switch from generated to object and I'll switch from bands to rings. Then from the x-axis I'll change it to the z-axis and now I can place this color into the emission. Now for much more control over the wave texture I'm going to have to press shift a and search for a color ramp node. Plug that in here and change the scale from 5 down to 1. Then I'll bring the black in all the way to maybe a factor of 0.84 and I'll bring the white in as well so that we get much more contrast. To make sure you don't accidentally change the camera just tap n and uncheck camera to view so that you can now zoom in and zoom out without the actual camera moving. Now we're going to increase the emission strength so that we get some nice bloom. I'll change the strength to something like 10. And I'll also change the color from white to maybe this purplish color to match with the Instagram logo. Once I'm happy with that, I would like there to be some sort of God rays present. So I'm going to do the same thing that I've done in this video over here by going to the world properties in the shader tab and just adding in some volume scatter. If you can't find the node, press period on your numpad to centralize them, then press shift A and search for a volume scatter. You can take the volume and plug it into the volume of the world output, but make sure you reduce the density down to something like 0.1. Once you're happy with that, that, all of the lights that you previously created, select them and make sure you change the volume down to zero. The same goes for all the area lamps as well. Once you've done that, press shift A and search for another spotlight and then press GZ to just bring it up on the Z axis. Then increase this one's power to something like 100, increase the blend all the way to one. And if you want to play around with the size, you can increase the size or decrease it. I'll keep it at maybe 50 and I'll give it again a slightly purplish color to match with the Instagram colors. And I'll reduce the diffuse to zero and the specular to zero. If it's invading with my previous lights, but I think it's adding really nice colors over the edge. So I'm actually going to keep the specular all the way to one to have these nice highlights. For the base material, I'm also going to give it a slightly purplish color. And once I'm happy with that, I'll go ahead and press render animation. I hope that was a fun little one for all of you and it was not too boring. I created this simply because I needed to create something for the thumbnail of my previous video, which if you haven't checked out, you definitely should, as it gives a base to vector math that's used quite a bit while creating 3D motion graphics. Until the next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching, keep creating, and stay creative.